Hey there everyone, Ramesh here back again with another video. In this video, let's take a look into the roadmap to learn post-tech Java development in 2022. Well, in this video, I am going to suggest you what are the technologies, frameworks, tools that you need to know to work on post-tech Java development. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. Well, here you can see the chart. So this is the full stack java developer roadmap and you can see we have a front end and back end well before you know jumping into this full stack java developer roadmap let's first understand what is full stack development or what is the role of full stack java developer well look at here this is the full stack web application architecture we have a front end back end and back end talk with the database and front end is also called client side back end is also called a server side and post tech java developer is the one who works on both front end and back end and in case of full stack java developer we use back end as a java okay so here we are talking about full stack java developer java because at a back end we are going to use java that's the reason the name full stack java developer all right well look at here full stack java developer roadmap i have divided into two sections front end and back end well first we'll take a look into what are the technologies frameworks tools that you need to know to work on front end application development and then later on we'll move to what are the technologies framework tools that you should know to work on back end application development all right let's first take a look into front end side well, look at here we have a html css javascript and typescript so these are the basic web technologies well in order to work on front-end application you should know these basic web fundamentals like html css javascript and typescript html is used to develop the web pages and css is used to style the web pages and javascript is used to you know manipulate the dom elements and process the ui logic and typescript is basically an you know it is a super setup javascript and typescript provides few more additional features like static typing and it provides object oriented concepts like classes interfaces and all those stuff all right and typescript is ultimately you know compiled into plain javascript all right so these are the basic web fundamentals that you need to learn to work on front end application development okay so once you are familiar with these web fundamentals then you can go ahead and learn javascript frameworks or front-end frameworks okay so before learning any javascript framework or front-end framework make sure that you should have a basic understanding of these web technologies okay html css javascript and typescript next we need a build tool to build a front-end application right so as we know that in java we have a marvin and gradle as a build tool right in front end you can see npm and yarn so these are the popular build tools that we can use to build the front end applications okay you can use npm npm stands for node package manager and it is by default comes with a node.js so whenever you install node.js in your machine then by default npm will also come with, along with the node.js okay and yarn so yarn is again a package manager all right so you can use npm or yarn as a build and dependency management tool at a front end side all right next you need a ide to develop the front end application right so you can go ahead and use either visual studio code id or sublime text visual studio code id is open source and very popular ide for developing front end application all right I'm going to suggest you to use Visual Studio Code ID to develop the front-end application because it is open source and free. So you can go ahead and use Visual Studio Code ID. It is a rich of, you know, extensions. So you can uh, install a lot of plugins in a Visual Studio Code ID. So go ahead and check out Visual Studio Code ID to develop the front-end applications. Well, once you know the basic web technologies, build tools and IDs, then you can go ahead and learn front-end frameworks well you can see here we have three very popular front-end frameworks like react angular and Vue. so in order to work on 
front end application development you have to learn one of the front end framework either you can learn react or angular or vue.js well among these three frameworks react is very popular javascript library okay so nowadays a lot of front end developers are using react so i'm going to also suggest you to learn react because it's very simple to learn okay and yeah so angular is complete framework and uh, learning angular it takes a lot of time because it is a complete framework it provides a lot of modules libraries all those stuff well learning vue.js is also pretty simple but vue.js is not popular as much of react and angular okay so i am going to suggest you to learn react because nowadays most of the front end developers or full stack developers are using react framework or react library all right great so in order to work on front end application development you should have to know at least one front end framework either react or angular or vue js okay we can basically develop single page application by using these frameworks all right next ui libraries well once we develop the web application at a front end side we need to style the web pages right in order to do that here you can see the popular ui libraries either you can use material material ui or bootstrap css well bootstrap css framework is the well known you know uh, css framework that we can use to style the web pages in our web application all right here i have mentioned material ui and bootstrap css ui libraries but there are a lot of ui libraries out there you can use based on the your requirement i have just mentioned here the common ones all right so these are the basic I mean bare minimum things I have mentioned here to work on front end application development. All right. So go ahead and first learn the basic web fundamentals like HTML, CSS, JavaScript and TypeScript and then take a look at the build tools like npm and yarn because these are the useful build tools to build the front end application and manage the dependencies and check out the ID. So Visual Studio Code ID I am going to recommend and check out one of the front end framework either React, Angular or Vue.js, I am going to suggest you initially you learn React because it's pretty simple to learn React. And next you can you know learn UI libraries. I am going to suggest you to learn Bootstrap CSS because Bootstrap CSS can be used in you know all of these front-end frameworks. Okay, so go ahead and learn all these front-end technologies, tools, and frameworks. Now let's take a look into back-end application development. Well, basically, in case of Bootstack Java application development, backend basically create the REST APIs and expose the REST APIs, and frontend basically consumes the REST APIs. Okay, and at a backend application development, we are going to use Java. As a Bootstack Java developer, you should know all the Java-related technologies, frameworks, and tools. So first, you need to know about Java fundamentals okay so make sure that you are familiar with java basics and fundamentals and you should also familiar with functional programming in java well java 8 basically introduced functional programming in java right the java 8 features like lambda expressions functional interfaces stream apis optional class so these are the very important java 8 features which introduce the functional programming in java okay and most of the java programmers nowadays using java 8 features like lambda expressions stream apis functional interfaces okay great so make sure that you have a good understanding of java and java 8 features well next you need an ide to develop the java application at a backend right so you can use either intelligent idea or eclipse id or sts id well if you want to develop the java application using spring boot then you can go ahead and use either intelligent idea or sts id STS ID is nothing but it is just a wrapper on top of Eclipse ID. Okay, so just go ahead and familiar with one of these IDs to develop the Java application or Java, you know, RESTful web services. Next, REST APIs. Well, in order to develop the REST APIs, we have a couple of options in Java. Either you can use Spring Boot to develop the REST APIs in Java, or you can use Jersey REST framework to develop the rest apis in java or you can use rest easy framework to develop the rest apis in java well spring boot is basically a very popular 
java framework that we can use to develop the restful web services and micro services and spring boot is uh, just an extension of spring framework and it reduces a lot of you know configuration that is required to develop the spring based application and spring boot provides a lot of features like auto configuration it provides embedded servers it provides production ready uh, in endpoints like uh, spring boot actuators okay it provides a lot of starter dependencies to minimize the configuration okay so i am strongly suggest you to use spring boot to develop the restful web services at a backend okay and couple of alternatives like jersey rest framework and rest eg so these are the frameworks which implements jax rs apis well jax rs is the standard java api and it is just a specification and these jersey rest and rest eg so these are the frameworks which implements jax rs api okay so just remember these are the couple of options we have in java to develop the rest apis and i am going to strongly suggest you to use spring boot to develop the rest apis and if you use spring boot then you can also leverage the spring uh, framework provided uh, features like dependency injection spring ioc spring aop okay you can leverage all these spring core features in a spring boot application okay well once you develop the rest apis then you need to secure the rest apis right in order to secure your rest apis i am going to strongly suggest you to use spring security well spring security is basically a de facto standard in java to secure the web application as well as the restful web services and spring security out of the box provides implementation for authentication as well as and authorization and spring security has a good integration with jwt okay so jwt is basically a token based authentication library all right so if you want to secure your rest apis go ahead and learn spring security and also learn jwt token based authentication okay great well next dao well basically in java application development we create a three layers controller layer service layer and dao layer well you can see to develop the dao layer here i have listed couple of options like you can use either spring data jpa or jpa along with hibernate implementation well i am going to suggest you to use spring data jpa because it reduces a lot of boilerplate code that is required to develop the dao layer okay we can just create a interface and extend the spring data jpa repositories we will get a full crude methods for a given entity okay but in case of jpa and hibernate we need to write a lot of code all right so you can use either one of them but i am going to suggest you to use spring data jpa to develop the repository layer or a dao layer well next build tools well in java we have a maven and gradle so these are the very popular build tools and project dependency management tools so you can go ahead and learn either maven or gradle well maven is pretty simple to learn and uh, yeah so maven is pretty handy so you can initially learn maven and based on the requirement you can also learn gradle as well all right so go ahead and learn build tools to build the java project and manage the java project dependencies okay and as a postdoc developer you should also know about the databases okay so here i have listed rdbms and no sql databases well in case of rdbms databases mysql postgresql oracle so these are the few popular and commonly used rdbms databases you can go ahead and check out these databases and in case of no sql databases you can check out mongodb or cassandra and mongodb is one of the popular no sql database okay so just go ahead and familiar with these databases all right so this is i know back end application development uh, technologies frameworks and tools well once you develop the full stack java application then you need to deploy this full stack java application on cloud right so here i am going to suggest you to use either aws or heroku so i have used aws and heroku a lot to deploy full stack you know java application so i am going to suggest you either you can use aws or heroku and apart from that 
you can use some other tools like docker if you want to deploy your full stack application in a docker instance then you can go ahead and learn docker and jenkins or so if you want to you know have a continuous integration and continuous delivery then go ahead and learn, you know check out the jenkins and git well git is a very popular you know version control system and as a full stack java developer you should have to know about git okay most of the it companies prefer using git as a version control system well next jira well jira is also a well known uh, software to develop the projects uh, as per the agile uh, methodologies okay so you can check out the jira uh, as a project management tool because most of the it companies prefer using jira to manage the projects uh, as per the agile you know development all right so these are the bare minimum things that i have listed over here if you want to become a full stack java developer then you at least need to learn these front end technologies tools and frameworks and these back end technologies frameworks and tools okay so these are the bare minimum things i have listed over here but if you develop the real time full stack java application then you may use you know a few more libraries or few more tools in your real time project but these are the common ones i have listed over here if you want to become a full stack java developer then go ahead and check out all these front end technologies from frameworks tools and back end technologies frameworks and tools all right i hope that you found this video useful let me know if you have any question about this topic in the comment section below and i will provide a link of this flow chart uh, you know in a video description so that you can go ahead and check out this flow chart all right great Thanks for watching I will see you in the next video